Chris Gennady, Wisdom Tree launched the Japan Dividend Growth ETF last month, ticker JDG. This is Wisdom Tree's 10th Japanese ETF. Clearly, you're big in Japan. So why do I want to own this one? Well, at Wisdom Tree, we, we love Japan. We love the prospects of Abenomics. We're extremely optimistic about its chances for success. So what we're really doing here is expanding the Japan toolkit. We want to be the one-stop ETF shop in the U.S. for people to ultimately be able to own Japan however they see fit. This particular ETF focuses on growth and quality. It's a great way to capitalize on how companies are deploying cash, raising dividends, raising buybacks, taking advantage of that shareholder return theme. And unlike your very popular DXJ, your JDG is unhedged, though, when it comes to the currency. So how do you mix it with the DXJ, which is up at 20% this year? It's having a great year. DXJ is having a phenomenal year. That's a, a basket of, of large cap Japanese exporters. And one thing that we talk about a lot is an approach where a lot of people prior to Abenomics starting were always just completely unhedged. They would layer currency exposure on top of their typical international ETF in Japan, as well as all over different developed international markets. So one of the things we're saying these days is, why not start from a more strategic baseline of 50% hedge, 50% unhedge? Because the reality is, the yen, especially in the short term, is difficult to predict. I know it essentially recently hit 125, but uh, a few weeks ago, it would have been at 119. And why it went from 119 to 125 all of a sudden, it's tough to know because nothing has really changed all that much in that short period of time. Can you talk about the changing that's going on at Japanese corporations? Clearly, there's more to Abenomics than weakening the yen. There's a lot of shareholder reforms as well. And talk about the companies in the JDG, which are going through these changes. Absolutely. So one of the things that we see is the creation of a new index, uh, the JPX Nikkei 400. That was created at the beginning of 2014. And the thought being, look, we need to inspire these companies to raise the return on equity and engage in more shareholder-friendly reforms, such as having outside or independent directors on the corporate boards. So essentially, this index is the first in Japan to sort of view membership as a reward. You're profitable, you have a high return on equity, you have independent directors on your board, you have the potential to get into this index. So what we did was we took our own proprietary rules that focus on dividend growth and quality and came up with a very, very similar list of companies that we believe, through our forward-looking metrics, have potential to raise dividends going forward. And then finally, how do we know when the Japan story has come to an end? We've seen Japan rise and fall before. Is it when the yen hits 200? Because you know, having a weaker currency is helping their exporters, but there's a downside to that as well. Japan is, is a more complete picture, I would agree with you, than just looking at the yen itself and, and sort of targeting any particular level of the yen. One of the things we find interesting is uh, DXJS, which is our small cap Japan fund. It's up almost as much as DXJ this year. So really looking at the complete market, seeing things like the dividends going up, seeing the wages going up, seeing inflation rearing its head in Japan and being able to say, look, for 15 years we were in deflation. We're not seeing very high inflation, but at the same time, we're not seeing zero inflation. We're not seeing deflation. We're not seeing the most wage increases, but we're not seeing zero wage increases. We're improving, and we think those incremental improvements are really the story. They have a lot of room, ultimately, to go, and I think really this is just the beginning. All right. Thanks a lot, Chris. Pleasure. And thank you for watching The Street.